Yeah. 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 Nivy, that was you, wasn't it? This is Jerry. What do you need? <laughs> I wanted to ask you about uh, what we talked about last time that uh, before we were uh, disconnected. Uh, yeah, what were we talking about? Oh. Oh, I remember what we were talking about. Uh, you are sure you want to discuss that here? Um, probably not. <laughs> probably not. That's what I thought, dude. He's <laughs> probably not. Um, the thing is, okay, let me give everyone a little insight to what we were talking about. We were talking about drugs. However, they were to be enhancing and positive. We weren't talking about the negative use for drugs, which is, which is totally bad. So, um, but there are some ways that you can use drugs that can be enhancing and can be positive. But you have to be intentioned so to use them. It's just like if you were if intentioned for your your drugs to work within your body to get rid of allergies and stuff. You're taking them with the intention that they're going to help you, right? So they help you with the intent also on there of your good intention of them helping you. Now, if you look at a pill and, and say, this pill is going to help me with uh, my allergies, and you intend that pill to help you even more than what it's made to help you, it will. Why? Because things can be intentioned. All kinds of things can have great intentions. You can intention yourself. You can do an intention and meditation that yourself be good intention. Ah, how many people would think that? It's like, like whoa. And um, the thing is about drugs, a lot of people just use them recreationally. That can be dangerous. Let's face it, that's dangerous. When I used them, look what happened to our band. Look, people overdosed died, things, bad things happened. However, when they were intentioned to do a particular thing, do you remember how good of a jam band we were? Do you remember how good of a jam band we We were an awesome fucking jam band. So um, we intentioned that when we did certain things, that we would be connected and that is why so many people followed us around because that connection was so strong we can anticipate each other's moves and now I'm not saying that was the greatest intention to use it for and you know what I'm here to tell you that there's that you don't need drugs really you don't you don't need them uh, let me tell you what Bashar says about drugs let me I'll tell you what Bashar I watch Bashar I think he's awesome he's awesome he says, if you smoke marijuana once, all right, you feel that feeling, you know that high, you can recreate it without the tool. He calls marijuana the tool. You can recreate, you can re recreate that experience absolutely in your head since you have experienced it. You have experienced it, what it's like. You can recreate that in your mind, body, and soul without the tool because your body remembers everything about it. Now, if you do want to have an experience that is drug-related and intended for good, that does not mean you're smoking every day or using every day or doing it once a month. These are special times of intention that you have serious needs and intends for healing, for life-changing events, for different... Do you understand what I'm saying? I know I abused. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I, I abused. But you don't have to. Not in this day and age. It's not necessary.
because you know what? Your brains are fourth dimensional now. I, of course, I had that too, but I didn't really make as much use of it as I could have. But, you know, we did channel some of our music. There's no question. I look back and say, oh, I channeled that from there. Oh, yeah, I channeled that from there. You know, oh, I channeled that from an experience that I had. You know, it's awesome that that I was able to do that. And I, I wish I could have, I wish I could go back now and use it even for greater good than I did because I, I thought I was doing pretty good. I was making people feel good. I was making people, uh, you know, I had some good messages out there. I mean, they weren't all bad or whatever, you know. But, you know, I wish I could have uh, taken it a step farther. But now that I look back on my life and see that what what was accomplished and what what was harmed and what was not harmed, I learned many, many, many lessons. But I can, can tell you... Can you tell me how can I channel music? Channel better? Okay, music. It's It's simple, dude. Music is all around you. Everywhere in the every space of the universe, there's music. I, there's also words. There's also noise. You may not be able to hear it. You might, it might not, might not bite, be in your dimension, but it's there. And you know what? If a song is written and goes out into space, it never decomposes. It's there in its fullness. You know why? Because it is part of every other piece of music in the entire universe. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. But anyway, um, what I want to tell you about that is that you can bring that, you can channel that music right into you whenever, because it's all around you. It is all around you. Now, the greatest people in the world that do music are the ones that hear it out of thin air or wake up in the middle of the night with it playing in their head or or have it just come to them without or they can touch the piano and all of a sudden there it is these are the people that channel the music it's not really something that they try to do it is just there it is just there that's how I experienced it I would go over to the guitar and I'd start strumming. All of a sudden, it would be like, just there, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. And then I would get some words and it would just develop. And it, it would come into me just like a flow. You know what I'm saying? Not all of it. Of course, there are some channels that are a little different than others. And you, you have to work on it a little bit sometimes. But the greatest inspiration just... It just sweeps over you, man. It's just wonderful. And um, how do you recreate you have, the tool? What? How do, how do you recreate? How do you create the tool? How do you recreate it um, without how using the drugs? The tool? Do yeah. an intention meditation about it. Say, help. How do is it that I can recreate this tool? Because you having the memory of it in your system, having experienced it, having known what it's like the perception of it in your special way you can recreate it from your perception you are that good at creativity because guess what that spark that within you is God guess what God can do he can create and so what you can create too because God is helping you to do it because you are part of God God here yes Creation, yes. I know some people have specific beliefs about how God works and where he is and, and how, uh, how he comes in and how he goes out. and Forget all that shit because God is here in you. And if you feed that love that is God, that flame that is God, if you feed that spirit that is God, Guess what? That is the spirit that will grow. That is, and your intentions will be brought forth because that is who you are in your perfect self. Who you resonate to be will come out. Your talents, if you have a talent for music, that's going to come out. If you have a talent for speaking, that's going to come out. If you feed that perfect God spark that is within you, you could do multiple things and have multiple thoughts of spirituality and all kinds of things. It's fucking groovy. But it's, it's, it's also who you are. Oh, I'm sorry I said the F word. 
Um, forgive me, but I don't mean it to be in, in, in any way negative. Yes. They're telling me, they're telling me, watch what you're saying. Like, uh, I, I'm sorry about that. Sorry about that. It's not it's necessarily... Okay. Uh, now, it, some, uh, Marco is also asking, um, can you talk about the magic mushrooms? The magic mushrooms. What do you want to know about them? They're, the magic mushrooms are everything you ever heard about them. They're, I mean, you've heard everything about them. And, um, what they they're do. They're psychedelic. Uh, they can be good or bad. They can, be, they can actually be neutral. Some batches are just not very good. Um, you know, it's, it's like woo. Um, I, have I have one question about magic mushrooms or whatever you want to call it psilocybin or that when I used it with intention of, of getting better of, of, um, of whatever connection that I have with whatever and uh, it really helped a lot and yeah. therefore I recommend it to people is it good or bad of me to recommend it to people that's that's one of my questions your intention is to help so that's good you see it helped you so that you, so in your intention, you're, he you're saying, oh, it helped me, so it could probably help somebody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you know why? Because their intention will be for that to help me. However, what is it that you had it do for you? What did it do for you? You asking me? Yes. Well, it did a lot. I mean, it's it's mixed up with DMT also. I have a lot of experience with DMT and mushrooms. Uh, you do it all the time? No, I don't do it all the time. I uh, I am trying to be as balanced as I can with with many things. I mean, I I I really do try. So um, I do it. I do it. I mean, I I do it maybe once every. Every third month or every twice a month. I don't know. It's it's different. It comes when it when when it comes. It's nothing that I okay. plan. I have a feeling when I when it's time. Okay, for I heard enough, dude. Let me tell you this. Be careful. I'm not here to be an advocate for drug use. That's not why I'm here. I know that I was probably seen as an advocate for drug use, but that is not why I'm here. But if it helped you that time when you did the shrooms and it made you feel better, well, God bless that. But you're not going to get that experience every time you use drugs. That was a special case, let me tell you, because uh, healing is a very high intention. A very high intention. And I'm saying, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. I mean that you can't do it that way. I can't, I'm not going to say you can't do it that way because you know what? Every freaking thing in the world is possible. Everything. So just be careful, dude. That's all I'm saying. I love you, and I want you to be good. And I, w I don't want you to be, get hurt or anything like that. But Thanks. make sure your intentions are very positive. Make sure your intentions are not just recreational because... What does that mean? I'm sorry. I'm not, I, English is. You're not right. just doing it to feel good. Your intention is to just get high and feel good. No, that's probably not. You know why that's not good is because your intention is wide open. Feeling good is a wide open intention, and bad things can come in. If and and the thing is, they don't appear to be a bad thing sometimes when they're coming in, but once they get there, they're hard to get rid of. So be careful. That's all I'm saying. Now, what Diana was saying earlier, yes, I. there are certain things. I know where she comes from. She's a cautious person. She's cautious. And I understand that, and that's important. So be cautious. I don't say, oh, never, ever, ever use drugs. But I can't say that. Who am I to say that? I mean, say, that would be... That would be like saying, I never use drugs, ha, ah. <laughs> you know, it's, I can't say it. So, so but, but I can say be careful. And I can say um, do it with intention and, and do it to grow. Don't do it just for fun because that can be dangerous. Because you can let in some things that you don't want in.
you have to be very smart about drugs. And I wasn't really smart about drugs, and neither was my band very smart about drugs. We just had them to have a good time and fun and blah, blah, blah. And uh, look what happened. Drug overdose, death, um, mental problems, break up families, children being hurt. Yeah, a lot of things that drugs did was not good, a lot of things. So what, what, what are your thoughts on uh, pop culture nowadays glorifying heroin use? The heroin stuff? Oh, God, that's a mess, man. That's a mess, you know? It's, it's, it doesn't take long to get hooked on that shit. It doesn't take... It takes one time for some people. One time to get, to get hooked on that. That shit is bad. So I'm just telling you, oh, I'm sorry, I'm using swear words again. Wow. Forgive me. Uh, they're not meant to be they're not meant to be negative. I'm just being expressive here. I'm trying to tell you something good by using something negative to show that it's negative. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So yeah. uh, I'm not saying it's just to be nasty or crude. But um yeah, that stuff one time. One time for heroin, you can get hooked. It depends on who you are, the situation, what's available. It's, it's like that with all drugs, though. You know, availability of drugs is a big thing. If it's available to you, it's hard not to get addicted because it's there. It was there for us. I mean, we were high all the time, so. but that was not a good thing. You know why? Because I didn't learn all the lessons that I needed to know. I didn't... I didn't be what I should have been in my perfect self. I mean, I was perfect, and I did a great job in many ways, but there was so many greater messages that could have come from me that did not come. What were you supposed to be then? I was supposed to be what I was, except I wasn't supposed to, I th I wasn't supposed to be high all the time. I was supposed to be letting these people know that we're following us all around, what a good example was and we were just weren't a good example and a lot of those people died because of us because of oh drug overdoses I can't imagine how many people died because of our band because of all the drugs that were out there I can't imagine how many overdoses and how many addictions there were out there because of us and that's not what I wanted to represent see I come to the oversoul and I say what the fuck you know, what did I do? Uh, I'm, ah, the, all these people died that could have been special and done, done greater things than they did. And, and I felt very much, at, well, of course, God forgave me. And I thank him for that. I say thank you. I had a trouble forgiving myself. I did have trouble. Because all these people hanging around us, taking drug overdoses, it was common. It was commonplace for somebody in the crowd to have a drug overdose during any of our concerts. Can you I? Think that's the kind of legacy that I want to like leave behind. Absolutely not. So let me ask you this: um, What do you recommend? Um, there's somebody in, in in our group that. Because does of drug? that, because he no longer does it, but there's he there's a lot of guilt within him um, for things that he did. How would you recommend for him to help him move on beyond that guilt that he's feeling from well, the things that he did? First of all, whoever it is, congratulations that you recognize that there was a problem. Congratulations for taking the bull by the horns. Congratulations for having enough balls to move forward in getting better, get some help. You know what? And you are already forgiven by God because he knows the circumstances. He knows why. He knows when. He knows what. And you know what? The only problem is you have a hard time dealing with what you did. You have a hard time dealing with those emotions that are attached to that time period. Guess what? You're not living in that time period anymore. You are living in the now. You are living in right now. And you are forgiven. And 
you know what, I love you for the fact that you had the courage to move forward and away from that addiction that you knew would bring you down and not lift you up. And you want to lift other people up, and you know what? Forgive yourself, and then you'll be able to lift others up. If you love yourself, you'll be able to counsel others to help them get rid of this kind of addiction. Is that something that you want to do? If you can get out of it, if you can love yourself and forgive yourself, then you'll be able to help others, not only help yourself. No, that's just the, that's just the beginning of it. You're helping yourself already. Forgive yourself and help yourself even more. But love, it'll help you to love others. It'll help you to move beyond the self, to become selfless, and speak to those that need help out of this situation. Go for it. That's what I say. Forgive yourself. Love yourself. Forgive yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Fucking love yourself. That is the biggest thing in the world, to move forward, to help other people fucking people grow and be who they're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be can down and not like, oh, poor me, I did all these terrible things in the past. Yes, you did them. Forgive yourself. You've already been forgiven. Now move out of it. No time for a pity party now. You have others to help. Okay. Because he does help others. He does, he does help others that are going through it. Well, now if he loves himself, he'll be able to help even more. Because when he can radiate the love out of him that he wants to do, <laughs> that's when there's a greater success. Okay. Good. Hey, I'm uh, sitting here in this room and it's uh, not Thank familiar. Thank you. How long, how long did it take you um, to, to go back to... to the, the higher self. Does that happen right away? Oh yeah, I went right back and they uh, uh, pretty much was a wonderful thing. I mean, open arms, love, every tingly feeling in the world. It was wonderful. And then they said, would you like to see if some what you did in your last life? And I'm like, oh yeah, great. And then I watched it and I was like, ooh, there are lots of lessons there. Yeah. Uh, and um. And you know what? I felt very sad for a little while, but they let you feel that so that you can appreciate what had happened. They put, sort of put you in a, a third dimensional outlook for a little while so that you can actually understand what was happening in not one perception, but a full sense around perception of what was actually happening and the most important things that were happening while you were alive and while... I got to look at many, many other lives that were following me around, that were influenced by my life, not only through the records and the live performances, but just uh, by friends and family of people that were listening and loving, and it influences millions. It influences freaking millions. And I'm like going, Holy moly. <laughs> I was I could have used some expletives there, believe me. Yeah. I I chose to just be a little more calm because after I watched that I was sort of like why why am I here? I did such a shitty job, you know. <laughs> I, I said, "Why did you take me back?" I mean, I'd have dumped me off somewhere. But um <laughs> The thing is, that's not the way they think. Your right. lesson is to be learned, and it, it, it was learned, man. I learned it. I learned that lesson. I didn't learn about swearing because I don't think that has anything to do with the lesson, to be honest with you. I really don't have anything. It, you know, saying a, saying a bad word doesn't have anything to do, unless you intend it to be negative or whatever. Then it can be, you, know, you might want to stop. I I don't I stopped saying some of them. I really did. I don't I don't I don't say G D or G J C or anything like that anymore. So okay. those are Anybody more else those are more well. So anyway, uh Yeah. Yeah, so here I am. And and do they when you're reviewing 
uh, let's say with, with, with family members, do you get to look at it from their perspective also, or do you see it only from yours? I mean, There's a million people watching when you're doing that. If, if, if they want to watch, they can watch. There's a million people going back with their videos. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a crowd pleaser. Believe me. They're going, yeah, I have had something. I had something similar. Don't worry. I, I mean, they're, they're supportive, but in a kick-you-in-the-butt sort of way. Um, they want you to realize that it is a lesson. You know, it is a lesson. It is a lesson. Mm -hmm. But they're going, yeah, hey, you're forgiven, you know. But, yeah, you were pretty crappy there. Yeah, that was a pretty crappy situation. Oh, yeah, that's not good. You know, you get you get some comments, and you'll say, why is everybody allowed to watch? How embarrassing. Not really. When you realize that you're already forgiven, when you realize that these people have already been through many things that you've already been through, it, you, it's only pride that makes you feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of drop your pride, and they sort of give you that lesson before you watch it. They're going to say, now, there's going to be a lot of people watching this with you. You're going to have to drop self. Self is not part of this, except for what you did in this life. Now, when you watch this, this is who you were, not who you are. And so, let's watch this and learn from it. Can I just say something? Sure. Uh, under the very deep DMT trips that I had, something very much similar happened to me. Uh, and through that experience, I left uh, for whatever this place is. I left it and I left to this other place where something that you just explained happened where I could see uh, sort of uh, my life all that I've done and but as a feeling more or less because this was under a very short time it's under it undergoes over f maybe five minutes or so so maybe right. one of those minutes or I don't know how to really put a perspective of perspective perspective of time when stuff like that happens but yeah. uh, everything happened very quickly and so my question well, just one uh, moment. My question to you: This period of time that you had to, or you could see what you've done, uh, how can if you put a time frame on that? What time is you that? really can't? You no. you can't put a time frame on it because it's timeless. There is no such thing as time, so you really can't put a time frame on it. Yeah, but I let know. me tell you: They put you through it emotionally. They put you through it visually. They put you through it uh, spiritually. They, there's so many perspectives of your life as you lived it. And you'll go back and look at it from those different perspectives. And you can stop it and look at some things closer. And they actually will stop it for you at some places and say, let's look at this particular place. Emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. And we go through that and, uh, and you... You might watch it. They might play it for you four times right in a row. One, uh, one little section. And you go, yeah, all right, I get it. All right, yeah, all right, stop, stop. Yeah, stop it. Stop it, I'm done. But they needed to do that for the full effect of that part to get through as a lesson. But you, the thing is, after you leave the video or whatever you want to call it, the little movie, the little feeling group, the whatever, you are back into the Oversoul, which is the beautiful, joyous, loving, accepting, undivided, but yet divided. It's so incredible to experience it. And it's like, wow. So I, I can hardly wait to meet you there. I, hope, I might be in another body then, but I'll, I'll meet you all sometime. Thank I'm going to go, okay? All right, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, thanks. And helping yes, thank us. Thank you very much, this is Sabrina. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. really love everything you had to say today. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. We love you. Um, I, th I think it was helpful to many. Yeah, I think, I think your I, information was helpful to many. You so, think? Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, well, I'll go and I'll, you know, 
I'll very see nice you some other you. time. Thank you. Thank nice. you. It's nice to meet you too. All right. Bye. 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 Journey well. Bye, Jerry. Thank you. Take care, dudes and dudettes. Yeah. <laughs>